Russia still holds a significant number of relics from the Cold War era, some of which have seen further development, while others were shelved or outright cancelled. However, in today's era of naval drones and unmanned underwater vehicles UUVs, the VA-111 SHK VAL rocket torpedo has resurfaced as a potential candidate for resurrection from the depths of the Kremlin's weapons labs. One of the most innovative underwater weapons developed by the Soviet Union was the VA-111 SHK VAL, Squall, supercavitating torpedo. SHK VAL, which was highly classified, was virtually unknown prior to the Cold War's end and only became widely known in the mid-1990s. It was powered by a rocket engine and could reach speeds of up to 200 knots per hour. But, in a world where most ships and underwater weapons were limited to 50 knots by physics, how did Russian engineers achieve such a speed breakthrough? Torpedoes have traditionally used propellers or pump jets for propulsion. SHK VAL, on the other hand, utilizes a rocket engine. That alone is enough to make it fast, but traveling through water causes significant drag problems. The solution move the water out of the torpedo's path. But how does one get water out of an object's path in the middle of an ocean? The solution. Convert liquid water to a gas. SHK VAL solves this problem by diverting hot rocket exhaust out of its nose, converting the water in front of it to steam. As the torpedo moves forward, it continues to vaporize the water in front of it, forming a thin bubble of gas. Torpedoes travel through gas with much less drag, allowing them to reach speeds of up to 200 knots. This process is referred to as supercavitation. The trick to maintaining supercavitation is to keep the torpedo enclosed in the gas bubble. This complicates turning maneuvers because a change in heading forces a portion of the torpedo outside the bubble resulting in sudden drag at 230 miles per hour. Early versions of SHK VAL appeared to have a very primitive guidance system, and attacks would have been fairly straightforward torpedo runs. Given that the warhead would have been nuclear, it would most likely have been sufficient to destroy the target. The Soviet Union clearly believes that at times, Torpedo speed was more important than maneuverability. SHK VAL was originally designed in the 1960s to rapidly attack NATO nuclear missile submarines, delivering a nuclear warhead at previously unheard of speeds. The torpedo has a standard diameter of 533 mm and a warhead weighing 460 pounds. Its maximum range is 7,500 yards. SHK VAL began mass production in 1978 and entered service with the Soviet Navy that same year. There are drawbacks to using any weapon. For starters, the gas bubble and the rocket engine are extremely noisy. Any submarine that launches a supercavitating torpedo will instantly reveal its approximate location. Having said that, such a fast-moving weapon has the potential to destroy the enemy before it has time to act on the information, as the enemy now faces both an enemy submarine and a 200-knot torpedo. Another disadvantage of a supercavitating torpedo is the inability to use conventional guidance systems. The gas bubble and rocket engine make enough noise to drown out the torpedo's built-in active and passive sonar guidance systems. Early versions of the SHK VAL appeared to be unguided, favoring speed over guidance. A newer version of the torpedo uses a compromise method, sprinting to the target area with supercavitation before slowing down to search for it.
Is there a future for supercavitating torpedoes? The United States has been developing such a weapon since 1997, but it does not appear to be deployable. Indeed, the U.S. Navy is currently upgrading the venerable Mark 48 submarine torpedo to ensure its continued service into the foreseeable future. However, the Navy's requirements far exceeded Shikval's capabilities, which included turning, identifying, and homing in on targets. Meanwhile, Russian submarines are the only ones in the world equipped with supercavitating torpedoes, which are modernized versions of Shval armed with conventional warheads. Russian industry also provides an export version, SHK Val-E, for sale abroad. Iran claims to have developed its own supercavitating torpedo, known as Hoot, which is believed to be a reverse-engineered SHK Val. But in today's world of rapidly evolving unmanned naval warfare and the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, the Virginia 111, SHK Val could make a comeback, not as a threat to its own launch platform, but as a deadly asset against enemy forces. Russia has demonstrated time and again that it can dust off Soviet-era designs, modify them, and deploy them to meet modern operational demands. There is already speculation among Moscow's defense analysts that the Virginia 111, SHK Val is back on the table. Whether that's true remains to be seen. Will Russia resurrect this underwater missile? Time will tell. What we do know is that Russia not only has stockpiles of old blueprints but has also proven its ability to bring them to life, if circumstances demand it.